Hey there, welcome to Make It Monday. Um, today I'm making a dress into a skirt. So I'm just going to show you what I've done. This was a maxi dress, a kid's maxi dress. And it had the straps and it had the elasticized top. And then it was hooked on, of course, with um, a seam right here. Like this. So what I did was turn it inside out and then I took my seam ripper and just separated the two pieces so that the top came off and then I had the bottom skirt portion so my daughter wasn't a fan of the dress but she wanted it as a skirt so this will be a fairly long skirt so now I need to make a casing because all the work is done for me with the side seams and everything else, all I need to do is make a casing for the elastic and then insert the elastic. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take this and just turn down about a half an inch or so. And then uh, there are actually two ways. If you have an overlock machine, you could overlock the edge and then turn it under um, and stitch along and make that your casing. If you don't have an overlock or serger, um, you could turn it over like this and then you would turn it over again just as much as you need to insert the elastic into. Since I have an overlock machine, I'm going to go ahead and overlock the edges. Please excuse the other room in there, don't look at that. <laughs> If you're surging, remember to always leave a tail that if you don't leave a long enough tail, the serger will come undone and re-threading can be a nightmare um, depending on your serger. Mine's fairly easy to re-thread, but some are not. Okay, so I've overlocked the edges. Um, like I said, if you don't have a serger, and even if you do, you might rather turn it under again. So you would turn it down once and then turn it down again. The next thing that I'm going to do is iron this edge so that it lays flat for me. Okay, so I've brought it to the ironing board and I've just laid it out. I'm going to give it a quick spray. I've just got a little mixture of starch and water. You could just use plain water. And then my iron is set on the cotton setting, which is a fairly high setting. But um, just depending on your material you want to look at what kind of material you have and set your iron to whatever the material setting is so I'm just gonna give it a tiny spray and then press all the way around that top and that will help me get a really good casing if I don't iron um, I'll still get a casing but it might not be as nice Okay, so I'm back around to where I started. The next thing I'm going to do is get my pins and my seam gauge. And if you don't have a seam gauge, you should really invest in one. They don't cost very much at all. And they are a wonderful, wonderful tool. Instead of having to use your measuring tape, you can just set this to whatever um, setting that you want, like a half inch or a quarter inch and then you use this little guide to help you. So it really saves, to me it saves headache and time. Okay, so I'm gonna start here at the side seam. Okay. Will I get my camera adjusted here? So I'm gonna go ahead and fold it down and just see how much I have here. That's where it naturally wants to fold to. I've got 
not quite a half an inch, so I'm going to see if I can get it back to half an inch, measure with my seam gauge, and then I'm just going to pin it. I'm just going to run my pins this way for right now. I'll change them later. So I'm going to do that all the way around. I'm going to measure half an inch and pin. And you'll get, after a while, you'll get to where you can eyeball it pretty well. So I'm going to press this just along the edge here one more time. all the way around. I'm going to use a quarter inch elastic. So a half an inch for a casing is plenty for me. If you're using a larger elastic, you need to leave a little bit of extra wiggle room that you can get that elastic through your casing. But since mine is quarter inch, I'm just going to go ahead and remove my pins and start to turn under and when you've got a half an inch turned down and you want a half an inch seam um, not seam, a half an inch casing just go ahead and fold it over onto itself and you'll see that it lays so nicely and so I'm going to press along the way and try to match up see where my seam is here I'm going to try when I fold it over to match that up as closely as I can and stick a pin in there. And this time I'm going to put my pins in this way. So I don't want those creeping out on me. And this is really the better way to pin, but because I needed to press that edge, I put them in the other way before. And I do apologize for not getting you videos last week and I think even the week before that I didn't do anything um, of tutorials um, except for my laptop screen replacement. Okay, I'm back at the machine and now I'm going to stitch it down. I'm going to go as close to this edge as I can. and really I'm using white thread um, you'll want to match as closely to your fabric as possible since this is my daughter's skirt and it's just going to be a play skirt it really doesn't matter so I'm going to go ahead and use white and that way you can see it and you don't want to use on your machine you don't want to use too tiny of a stitch but you don't want it too big um, you want it kind of an in-between stitch. Mine's set on three. I don't know what your machine setting might be, but it's just kind of a medium stitch, and so that way if you have to rip out, those stitches aren't so tiny that it takes you forever, and they're not so big that um, it's more like a basting stitch, you know. So this will be right in the middle, and it'll be good for what I want. So... I'm going to start at the side seam and that way it'll tack it down a little bit so when I go to put in the elastic um, it'll slide over that seam without too much trouble. Okay, so I'm going to just take a couple of stitches forward and a couple back, take out my pin, okay, and stay as close to that edge as I can all the way around.
Another tip that I've shared before, I'll share it again, is that I usually wear safety glasses when I am sewing and the reason is that I was using my serger one day and the needle broke and it flew up into my face and hit me right by the eye and I didn't have on any safety glasses or anything not even like regular glasses I usually wear contact lenses and so um, when it hit me that close to the eye I thought okay this is ridiculous I'm gonna have to do something because I, I don't know it just I wouldn't even get LASIK um, surgery on my eyes because you know if something goes wrong that's your vision that's your eyesight and you can never get it back so I was totally panicked about it and at the time when I went in I was pregnant so they couldn't do it anyway but um, after that I was just um, my husband would try to get me to go and get LASIK and I said no I just can't I can't deal with the thought of somebody cutting my eye so um, since that happened, I wear safety glasses. Today I'm wearing my regular glasses. But um, if I'm not wearing regular glasses, I certainly do wear safety glasses. Just because you never know when something freak is going to happen. And you always want to be prepared. And my sister laughed at me. She's like, oh, you're crazy for wearing safety glasses. That's nuts. But I don't care what she says. I don't care that she thinks it's nuts. If it protects my vision, it's worth it to me to look a little bit silly. And nobody sees me in here but my husband and kids anyway. Alright, so I'm going to backstitch right here. And you see that I'm leaving a gap. See, I'm leaving a gap. And it's really probably bigger than I need. But I want to make sure I have plenty of room to get in there with my elastic. Alright, so I'm going to clip my threads. Okay. Now I'm going to measure off my elastic and you want to measure according to your child so you might want to take your tape measure and measure around their waist or you can just use the elastic or um, not not your child's waist but your waist or whoever um, the garment is for. She's about 19 inches in the waist. So and another good way to do that is um, if you measure from your middle finger to your elbow is 18 inches. So you could just, if you have a 19 inch waist, or um, even if your waist is 36 inches, you can measure twice to your, from your middle finger to your elbow, which is approximately 18 inches, and um, that should be what you need. Okay, so I'm going to use a safety pin in the end of my elastic and then feed it through the casing. So I'm just going to take my safety pin and open it up and I'm going to put it into the end of my elastic just like that. Nothing fancy. Just stick it through. Just something that will help me get it through. And there are elastic feeding tools that you can get like at Joann Fabrics or any fabric store. Even Michael's Art Store might carry them. I'm not sure. You could probably even maybe find them at Walmart. Um, the way I'm going to go is across the seam here. See, when I tacked it down, I tacked it down with the seam going that way. See, all that is facing this way. So when I go in there across that, it's just going to glide right over. It shouldn't hang up at all. If you go against it, um, it'll get hung up. So just feed that through, just like that. Pull it along. The one thing you want to be careful of, though, is to not lose your tail inside of there. So be aware of where your tail is. attached to the cabinet. Okay, I'm going to take this loose now and I'm going to feed out to the opening. And some of you might stitch together your elastic with the machine. That's fine. However you want to do it, 
you do it your way. I'm going to do it by hand because I find for me it works better. The elastic, when I put it on the machine, it creeps all around and it never looks right. So I like to stitch mine together by hand. So what I do is just hold it together and then whip stitch around the outside. And I'll show you that in just a second. Okay, I am back with my needle and thread. So what I like to do is make sure that it's laying flat the same way. So kind of let it go and let it fall down and make sure it's not twisted. And then lay it flat one onto the other. However much I need to overlap. I'm only going to do like an inch overlap. Um, you could do more, you could do less. It's really up to you. I've knotted the end of my thread and now I'm going to just start to whip stitch this side. Okay, I'm going to take a good couple of stitches, probably two or three stitches, right here in this first space. Whoops, came unthreaded, didn't I? And that way I can be sure that even if the knot comes out, the stitching shouldn't come out. Okay, and then I'm going to take a little step up and so and then another little step up. I don't want to leave too much gap in between, but I don't want, you know, it doesn't have to be too close together either. All right, so just a basic whip stitch, just in and out from one end of the elastic to the other where it's overlapped. And I apologize if I'm not explaining things very clearly today. Ugh, keep coming unthread, unthreaded. Okay, I'm going to do the same in this end that I did on the other. I'm just going to take a couple of stitches in the same place and that way I can be sure it's not going to come loose. Okay, so with the same thread and needle, I'm going to go to the other side. And nobody's going to see this but you, so it doesn't matter that you're going to have a little tail that overlaps the the elastic. I'm going to do the same on this side, a couple of stitches in there, and then go up this side. I hope I was on camera. Oh my goodness, I wasn't even checking. Sorry. Oh, I came unthreaded again. Ah. Okay, almost done. Whoops. Okay, I'm going to finish off with about three stitches in there and then leaving a little loop, I'm going to insert my needle back up through that loop. Let me see if I can zoom in and show you exactly what I've done just in case you're a beginner and you're not sure how to end off. Hmm. Well, the camera doesn't want to focus, but... There. Alright, so I'm going to take that needle and insert it where I was. And you see there's a little loop right here in the thread. I don't know why my camera won't focus and I'm really sorry about that. But basically, you're just going to insert your needle through that loop of thread and then pull it tight. And you can do that a good couple of times if you want to. Okay, and then clip any extra. The next step is just to let that go up in there, just pop it up in there, work it up in there. And then with that up as far as it'll go into that casing, we're going to stitch this opening shut on the machine. There. 
your threads. And you're done. Okay. Here it is, the finished skirt. I hope that you enjoyed the tutorial and I thank you for watching. Thanks to my subscribers. I can't believe you're so many. I don't know why you're watching my videos. I really don't, but I really appreciate it. Uh, it's I am really stoked. I have, uh, when I looked last, which was I think yesterday, I had like 71 subscribers. I can't believe that. I used to only have like two or three and then all of a sudden it exploded and so many people were subscribing to my videos and I just am really honored that you would do that and um, you know there are so many things that you can do with kids clothes your kids grow up fast and you know you can they can be refashioned in so many ways you can take the bottom off of a dress like I did and make it into a skirt you can take the top off of a dress and make it into a really cute play shirt or a blouse you could, if the top still fits and the skirt's getting too short or something, you could take the top off and add a new skirt. There are so many options with clothing. It's just astounding. And, you know, like I said before, if something's not comfortable but you like the print, you can always refashion it into something else. And I really enjoy doing it. My kids enjoy that I do it because it gives them a little bit longer to wear the clothes that they love so it really comes in handy um, it's good to know a skill of how to sew it keeps you from having to pay a tailor or um, seamstress to do it so I don't know I, it's just something I enjoy to do and I hope that this was informative and helpful for you I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you have a wonderful day bye